Well, I'm on the M25, which is the Greater London Orbital Motorway. It goes all the way around, all the way around the outskirts of London. And for once, the traffic is moving freely, but it is snowing, so that can only be a temporary thing. So if you hear clunking in the background, of course, that's the Land Rover Defender windscreen wipers. Yes, you guessed it, I'm back on the road. Another busy week, but uh, I've got an hour in the car, so I thought I'd record another one of these podcasts. I'm Paul, and this is the On The Road Mastering Portrait Photography Podcast. Well, what a difference to recording it last week when I was complaining that the temperature gauges in the Land Rover were indicating 27 degrees. Here it's saying 6 degrees and it is actually snowing quite hard. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a fairly, a fairly noiseless journey home uh, to be able to recording. So if my windscreen wipers are clanking away, well, I'm sorry, there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, it's been a busy couple of days, a busy week. Uh, do I ever say anything different? Do I ever say that was a quiet one? I suppose I talked about being on holiday for a week. Uh, but life is busy and I love it that way. Of all the problems you can have in a business, being busy is the one you want the most. Uh, I mean, if you're one of those lucky people that only ever works a day a week and gets hundreds of thousands of pounds to do it, good for you. I am not one of those people. I'm one of those people who uh, is constantly on the go. There's always stuff going on around us. And so consequently, I'm always busy. Uh, yesterday, I have to say, in a week of busy day, in a week, yeah, a week of busy days. Is that the right wording? Yeah, a week of busy days uh, was glorious in its energy and the stuff that was going on. But I didn't stop from about uh, nine o'clock in the morning, all the way through till midnight. Uh, so actually about 20 past 12 this morning. And it was a day when lots of things happened, most of which were unexpected or suddenly came to fruition. Uh, emails coming in, bookings coming in, feedback about other things we've been doing coming in. Uh, it was a day where bar one email, which was a fly in our ointment, every single message and email and phone call was just simply lovely. And you need those days, you know, when you're working all the time and fatigue can creep in. And as particularly as, as we are as photographers, creative people, sometimes all you need to know is that you were doing a good job. And yesterday was one of those days where a combination of feedback and bookings suggests that to be the case, not just in our normal business, but also in mastering portrait photography, a couple of really lovely emails that I finally uh, managed to find some headspace to respond to. Uh, you guys know who you are if you're listening to this. Um, obviously, I will get to uh, the answers to those questions as soon as I can. Uh, so it, it was absolutely lovely. And then in the midst of that, we actually had the day before, we had a shoot cancelled because of covid it's, it is like that at the moment. But at the same time, we'd had a request for a shoot to be done as quickly as possible. And so prior to that, I was saying, well, it's going to be June uh, before we can get you into the diary. Of course, suddenly I've got an afternoon where I'm unexpectedly and fortuitously free. So a little bit of serendipity. And I got to work with a couple of guys uh, from a design agency who do some really, really funky animations and videos and they work with uh, still images and moving images and really turn them into something quite spectacular, something very different to what normally I would consider. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm like most photographers. I don't like it. Or I get a little bit twitchy when I see what people do to my images. Um, I'm fine when it's a really cool agency or a designer that really knows what they're doing. But sometimes you just see your images and all you can think is, why on earth did you crop it like that? However, these guys, they had already e emailed in and said, look, this is what we want to do. Are you willing to do it? Well, of course, it was absolutely brilliant to work with them. They were lovely, 
Absolutely lovely. So uh, to Elaine and Ben, uh, who came by the studio yesterday afternoon, thank you for something that was so much fun to do. And I cannot wait to see uh, what you do uh, with the pictures. Uh, for anyone who's curious, um, I don't think I'm giving away commercial secrets. Uh, the company is a company called Broken Antler, and they're just an uber cool design agency from just a few miles uh, down the road. So all in all, yesterday was, well, just one of those days that you hope you get once in a while, but they don't come uh, nearly as often uh, as, as you would like. Uh, during the day, actually, during the past week, I've spent a huge amount of uh, time. Uh, I say a huge amount of time. The business, a business like a photography business will absorb every single second you give it and then some, particularly if, like most of us, you came about ending up or you came to be a photographer because it was your passion, it was in your soul, and you suddenly discovered that you could uh, earn a living from it. Because it gives you, um, it, it, it puts a pressure on you, an internal pressure, to create everything to the absolute best of your ability. So there is always something to do. There are always things to change. And this week I've spent more time, I think, on our website than I have in the past two years, I, I suspect. Uh, it's been lovely. I've really enjoyed sitting down and coding it because our website, I built it. I've done our own website because I am a control freak. Can't help myself. I try not to be. But in the end, I really like to understand what's going on. So if something doesn't work, it's my own damn fault. I'm not in the, uh, in the hands of somebody else. So I do it myself. By the way, I noticed on the podcast the other day, sometimes it sounds like I'm talking with a slight vibrato. That's because I'm driving and I hit bumps in the road and it sends your voice a bit weird. Or maybe it's the microphone wobbling, I don't know. Either way, it's not me trying to put a really weird vibrato into my voice. It really is just the net effect uh, of driving along bumpy roads. Uh, so anyway, Control Freak, and I've spent the whole time over the past week, 10 days or so, and there's still more to do, uh, all over the website, sorting out the keywords, sorting out the structure, sorting out how it presents on a mobile device. It was always okay. I was never worried about it, but I was never excited about it. And I think I'm heading in the right direction now. So uh, have a look. It's paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk. Uh, paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk uh, have a look and see whether you agree with me I've sorted 99% of it out there's still a couple of holes uh, which I'm working on uh, but I'm really enjoying setting up new pictures setting up new structures and of course finding a space for our workshops that we have just finally they, they've been in the pipeline for so long I don't know how many years people have been asking me to do uh, workshops, not just the one-on-one -on -one workshops, which we've done, or we've done them for a long time, but date in the diary. Can we come as a, you know, is, is can I book to come to your studio as part of an organised day? And so uh, that's precisely uh, what we have finally done. Um, they are strictly limited places, so that uh, I've seen lots of workshops where it's ten or twenty. This is not that. Far fewer than that. Um, so that we have time to chat, we have time to critique, we have time when one person maybe is uh, practicing with the lights, I have time to sit with somebody else and go through what they uh, need to understand. Um, we split them broadly into two halves. So there are what I've kind of called euphemistically creative workshops, which essentially means anything where the day is spent with a camera in your hands, I guess, for want of a better term. So uh, those, uh, so there's three of those. There's one on studio portrait photography or studio lighting. There's one on available light or basically getting great pictures wherever you are. Because if you learn that skill, man, the world's your oyster. You don't need anything but a camera and a sense of humor. Uh, and then the third one is dog photography. So those are all creative in the sense that they're about your camera, they're about light, they're about creativity. Uh, and then there's three others which are much more about the business side. Uh, there's one on workflow, which is really all the way through from shoot to being able to present your images to the client. So prepping your images, archiving, renaming, running Lightroom. We're a Lightroom house. I've used Capture One. 
Uh, but from an efficiency point of view, Lightroom suits us far better. I'm not getting into the debate about which has the best image quality because for your business side, your business, and I'm being quite clear here, your business side, actually workflow is probably more important than pixel definition. Uh, my uh, friends across the industry who use Capture One insist that Capture One gives you slightly better image quality. And also with a Nikon Z9 that uh, I've uh, downloaded, I think it's called a Nikon's FX Studio. I think that's the name of it. Um, and actually, the image quality off that is off the top of the scale. Man, the, the files look so good. But A, you'd expect that because it's Nikon writing software for their own cameras. Uh, but it's an absolute pig to use. It's slow. It's clunky. Yes, I can get incredible image quality out of it. But if I tried to work like that every day of the week, I wouldn't have a business uh, to be able to sell uh, superlative quality images from. You have to be pragmatic. And that's our business workflow uh, workshop and then there's one on the business of portrait photography which is about how you monetize your talent for portraits and then there's one on the business of wedding photography which as you'd expect is about monetize. monetizing is an odd word I don't even know if it's a real word I remember I, where did I learn that word I cannot remember anyway monetize make money from your talent monetize your talent so the beeping in the background is an ice warning <laughs> it's now saying it's three degrees, which I could guess by the fact I'm driving through a blizzard. Um, but how you make money from uh, photographing uh, weddings, with, uh, creating albums, the tools you need, the processes, how to run your reveal room, so how you bring the clients in and how you make the best of your personal sales. Notice I'm not using in-person sales, personal sales. They are in-person, but I much prefer the term personal sales because it is a personal service that you're offering. So that's six workshops, three creative, three on much more of the business and, and mechanics of running a photography business. Um, they're priced at £295 for the day. It's a properly intensive day, uh, gathering at nine, finishing at sort of 4.35, those kinds of times. Um, food, lunch is provided and you can drink as much of our tea and coffee as you liked. 295 quid, including VAT. Uh, if, if you are a member of the societies, the SWPP, as I would have known it, uh, but the societies of photographers, if you are a member of the Master Photographers Association, if you're a member of the uh, British Institute of Professional Photographers, and even if you're a member of the Mastering Portrait Photography website, there is a 25% discount so that takes the price down by about 75 quid. So 295 pounds uh, without the discount, uh, a lot less than that with a discount. If you just Google Paul Wilkinson Photography Workshops, that's Paul Wilkinson Photography Workshops, uh, that should find you to the right page. They are listed on Paul Wilkinson Photography. Uh, have a look there. See if any of those look like they might be interesting to you. Given uh, the various emails I get in on uh, the podcast, I'm assuming at least one or two of you might find those uh, interesting. The first, I think, is on the 25th of April. So it's just three and a half weeks away. 25th of April. Uh, I, know we, I know we've announced them late. Sorry about that. But we've put them all on Mondays uh, because that is the day that most studios have a break or at least have the least pressures on their time. Uh, so the first is on the 25th of April, and that is Studio Portrait or studio lighting, mastering studio lighting. We spend the day in the studio exploring modifiers, different ways of lighting the face and the body, what to look out for, how to run a shoot so that you get the most amount of images that you can sell. Because at the end of the day, much as this is about creativity, and I say this all the time, is if I don't make money, I don't get to be creative. So we have to be able to create things that the client is going to love and create enough of them that our margins are good and solid, our revenue is good and solid, and we have an effective business. I know, I know, I know, you know, <laughs> art for art's sake, money for gold's sake, and all that stuff. But uh, of course, as a business, you have to think that way. So the first, 25th of April, this year, three and a half weeks away, studio lighting, studio portrait photography, mastering that intermediate level. So you do need to be able to hold a camera and know which way to look into it, uh, because you'll need to be able to understand manual settings 
uh, to be able to shoot in the studio. So have a look, Google uh, Paul Wilkinson Photography uh, Workshops. Uh, you should find it. If not, drop me an email. I'll point you in the right direction. Um, and there are big discounts for those associations. Uh, if you just email in to say you're a member, we'll just double check. Uh, and then you will get your discount. Uh, right, today's topic. As you can hear, I'm driving back from a shoot and I've just had the best morning. So uh, I've been working with a recruitment agency today um, who are, I think, primarily a technical recruitment agency. So uh, they recruit into uh, IT roles and uh, business management, technical management roles, I think. Um, lovely phone call with the owner yesterday. There's only five people in the company. And the call was along the lines of what kind of thing do you want? Not sure. How long will it take? Uh, or his question was how long it take? And when I said, nah, three hours, I think, for five people, two locations and a group shot of five, then probably two, two three hours. And he said, oh, do you know, I reckon he said we could do that in an hour and a half. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, OK. I said, but I've got the whole morning set aside just in case it takes longer than you're expecting. Uh, didn't really know. I mean, they showed me some ideas from other agencies, and obviously they showed me some pictures that we have on our headshot area of our website. If you're curious, you want to go and have a look, again, just Google Paul Wilkinson Photography Headshots, and that will take you to our website, and you better see the kind of things we do. We split headshots into two broad brushes. There's corporate, and by which I normally mean suited and booted, either in our studio or in an office location, but normally they are for organizations, for companies, for charities. To a degree, for academia, we do quite a lot of work with universities and research teams. And then the other half is more, I, I guess it would be more like an actor's headshot, traditional headshots, personal branding, much more informal on the whole. But of course, all of these boundaries are completely fluid. And when you think about it, they're all just portraits. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, the client this morning wanted that sense of office space being in the pictures, but the minute I walked in, I knew we had a problem because one end wall was green and the other end wall was bright burgundy, neither of which are in their brand identity. <laughs> it just so happens they're in an office that has a bright green wall at one end and a bright burgundy, wine burgundy wall at the other. With windows along one side and more printers and recycling and shredders and paper in and out trays and filing cabinets than I've seen in my entire life along the other wall. So I started pretty slowly because they weren't certain what they wanted, but what they, in essence, what they wanted is what everybody wants. And I'm getting so used to some of these keywords now, I can almost, almost uh, recant them before the client says them. Friendly, professional, smart, as in bright people, trustworthy, dynamic, so a little bit of energy, approachable, relaxed. But in the end, you can boil it all down to basically someone you'd like to do business with. And that is the essence of corporate portraits, corporate photography, is all of the time in your head, you're trying to figure out, would I do business with the person in this photograph? Would I pick up the phone? Do you know what? I've got a million options. I've hit Google. I've looked for recruitment agencies. I found their website. I go onto the website. I see a picture. Would I now pick up the phone or would I go to another agency? These guys are really switched on. They have a, a creative team building their new brand, building their website. But at the moment, they don't yet have an identity that they can hang their hat on, um, which is has its challenges because of course I don't really know whether I'm hitting the mark in terms of the photography but if we put those words back in friendly professional smart trustworthy dynamic approachable relaxed you know we're going in the right direction because nobody wants anything different we want a hint of the office in some of the photos because they're really useful we want a hint of people having conversations on the phone because they're re really useful but it keeps coming back to the same question. Would I do business with the people in these photographs? But in the end, they're all just portraits. Um, and the only keywords I get really aggy about, and I really hate it when someone says to us, 
I say to them, when we're doing our consulting, when Sarah and I are out working as consultants to photography businesses, the one phrase I don't let anyone put into their brand statement is we want to exceed expectations. Why? Well, everybody, everybody wants to exceed expectations. And if everybody puts that in a brand statement, guess what? Everybody expects their expectations to be exceeded. And if, when, if and when that happens, if your expectation is to have your expectations exceeded, well, they're no longer being exceeded, are they? It's just, well, expectations. And so I don't really like to use that wording uh, when it comes to uh, consulting or keywording. You know, I, I understand that everyone wants to be impressed, everyone wants to be excited. And of course, as a photographer, I love it more than anything when we show a client some, cl some images and they just love them. Of course I want that. But I think that's to be expected, right? That's our job. So uh, anyway, that's a, a slight aside. So uh, and if you want to see, uh, if, you, if, ever, if ever you need, if you're a business and you're looking for some consultants who do not like the phrase exceeds, mar exceeds expectations, uh, then me and Sarah are definitely the people to give a call to. So anyway, it was very slow and very gentle worked in the office and then quite quickly we worked out a couple of things one is that getting a group shot of five people probably for a company that's rapidly expanding isn't necessarily a great use of their time it's a difficult shot to get when it's snowing outside and the office has a green wall anyway so let's have a think about that let's park that for a moment and let's just do headshots so i started in the office you know the kind of stuff, shooting through computers, massively shallow depth of field. The Z9 with the 85 1.8 bolted to the front gives this ridiculously shallow depth of field, but a beautiful, <laughs> albeit slightly green, rendering of the background. Additionally, the fluorescent lights, we couldn't turn them all off. So I'm getting some really quite interestingly coloured hair lights coming and going uh, because I'm shooting on quite fast shutter speeds. So all sorts of little factors, but actually some really beautiful pictures and then as I'm showing those to the client we're chatting and developing the theme and we worked out quite quickly actually that what would be really good would be just to get beautiful portraits of each of the five guys so as I always do we stepped outside although it was cold I worked quickly and some of the pictures some of the pictures have come out really really beautiful and by some of the pictures I mean every employee all five of them have at least two pictures where I think do you know what that's my craft that is everything I've ever set out to do those are the kinds of images that I've always wanted to create so they've got great images and then with the two senior guys from the business we went and borrowed somebody's house so you know what it's like when you get, uh, I'll send you over, the client rings you or emails you, says, can you do the headshots? Yes. What kind of things do you want? Oh, roundabout, roundabout. <laughs> That's the bumpiest approach to a roundabout ever. In case, momentarily, you'd forgotten that I am, in fact, sitting in the Land Rover. Um, so, of course, uh, they ring you up. They say, can you do it? We say, yes. We say, what kind of things do you want? They said, I'll send you some ideas. They've, they've trawled the internet. They've trawled... Alamy and Getty and uh, Shutterstock and I get the pictures through and of course they all have that very familiar I always call it like a Californian look to them very relaxed very sunny very bright uh, the office furniture is all color coordinated there's no clutter lots of glass and wood and steel you know very cool very cool brilliant brilliant beautiful images and then you look at the office I'm working in in the snow. And, well, that's not quite ooh, uh, bumpy again. Not quite so straightforward. Uh, but we went over to uh, the, a friend of the owner has this beautiful house. We went over there. And it turns out it's a house that has been used for photography a lot. And I'm always a little bit wary of that because, you know, the owner is clearly very proud. The house is stunning, man. It was so off the top of the scale, just beautiful, beautiful decor. It's not finished, so there's bare plaster and bare brick in quite a lot of the rooms, and yet even that looked amazing. You could use 
uh, there wasn't an inch of the building uh, you couldn't use. But as I've allu- alluded to in other uh, podcasts, one of the problems with a venue like that is that I know I leave somewhat disappointed, particularly given I'm on quite a tight time frame by now. Not only have we burnt up the hour and a half to two hours that uh, th- their estimate, but we're now at three hours, which is much closer to my estimate. But nonetheless, it's beautiful uh, and we work to different locations and the light's great and I've taken some really lovely pictures of the two senior guys uh, from the agency who are just really nice people to work with. But I go back to my point, which is, okay, it's corporate, it's branding, it's, you know, what we would have called in the old days corporate portraiture, I guess. But actually, they're just portraits, right? And every company now, their brand values will include things that are, broadly speaking, this company is a nice place to work in, this company has nice people working in it, and this company is a nice business to do business with. So actually, oh yeah, portraiture, brilliant. And so I've come away from this shoot with a camera chock full of the kind of images that I really, really enjoy creating, the kind of images that I started in portraiture because that was what I took anyway. And it's just been one of those lovely days. And now as I've driven round the hills of the Chilterns, the sun is once more pouring. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's one of those days where uh, one minute it's snowing, one minute it's sunning. It's sunny. So just, if you're a portrait photographer and you're thinking, listening to this, or rather before listening to this, you're thinking that corporate portraiture or branding portraiture is not something that you want to do, have a think about that from a business point of view. It's relatively easy for business clients, for corporate clients, to find space in their diary during the week to be photographed. It's usually relatively straightforward, or at least it's more straightforward than the weekends, for us to find space in our diary for me to either go out into sight or to have them in the studio to do it. Um, is the uh, revenue as good? Well, in terms of just looking at your top line revenue, probably not. Probably we will take more money for a shoot from a, let's say, a, a three generational family wanting to create an album and pictures on a wall than I will from a corporate gig. But you have to remember that they're after files. And, and by definition, we don't sell files. In, in our, normally, and you know my views on this if you've ever listened to a podcast or read an article, I don't like selling files. If you sell a file, you've just sold your crown jewels. And while, yes, all right, your costs are low, well, they're free, uh, at least in terms of Uh, physical cost, you have just given your client everything they ever need to print from. So with our social clients, families, and those kinds of gigs, we never, ever sell files. However, when you're doing corporate portraiture, if you're doing branding portraiture, it's all about files. So even if, as is the case, the revenue is lower, top line revenue is lower, your bottom line revenue, and particularly your bottom line per hour spent on the shoot is much the same if you get your pricing right. So if you work out how many hours you spend on the different styles of shoot, portraiture for the corporate market, portraiture for families, you work out how many hours you spend on it in total, you work out how much those shoots cost, so you take an average shoot of each or work out some way of calculating it, so that uh, you include in on the social side, on the family side, you include the cost of the frames, you include the amount of time you retouch the images, you include the amount of time you spend in the reveal room or the sales room. You add all of those costs up, everything you can think of, and then you deduct that from your top line revenue for that type of shoot, and then you do exactly the same for corporate. Bearing in mind, even things like today, although the fuel cost has gone through the roof, every mile I'm driving is being charged back to the client. So in theory, I have no or very little physical cost because the client's paying. I have a time cost, which is, you know, broadly speaking, uh, for the shoot at least, 
uh, not dissimilar, but I'm charging per hour. So even if that goes to a whole day, I'm making, uh, I'm charging that revenue for it. And in the end, depending on what your model is, so for us, for instance, we charge time for the shoot and for every hour, we include four or five finished files, depending on which type of shoot it is. If they want extra shoot, extra files, we charge for those. So every minute I'm working, I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I can charge for it. Whereas, of course, for most photographers, when we're running social photography, uh, families and the like, um, you run the risk. You, you will either charge a nominal fee or you'll charge some amount for the shoot. You'll invest time and effort and time in the sales room. And what you're gambling on is that you're going to be able to turn all of that time and that investment and those beautiful pictures into really good sales. And we do. They are still my favorite thing to do. They are still uh, the business that we've built. But in corporate, although I don't have that opportunity for the upsell, I'm being paid for every minute I'm working anyway. When you do your maths properly and you work out all the way through your costs, all the way through your time, and uh, get to that bottom line, the difference between them per hour spent, for us at least, because we charge it very carefully, is minimal. So you have to work it out that way. Figure out your pricing so that when you look at that line, that bottom line of the amount of uh, margin per minute spent, that they look more or less the same. And if that's the case, suddenly corporate's very exciting, right? Because I'm just taking portraits. I'm meeting really smart people. I'm meeting people that I really like to chat with and understand their life and their world. I'm getting out and about because about half our corporate work is out on location, about half is in the studio. So I get to be out and about. I get to meet people like I did with a design agency yesterday. Although that it's not corporate, it's still based on that pricing model. It's branding imagery for them. I get to play and meet people. I get to laugh. I get to do things that I don't normally get to do when I'm photographing, let's say, grandparents, kids, and grandchildren. So if you're thinking about setting up a portrait photography business, it's not a bad shout to think about everything to do with portraits, whether it's corporate, whether it's headshots, or whether it's scooping up three generations and laughing them with them in your local park. It really is the best business to be in. Portraits are very much still portraits. So anyway, uh, as I, oh, you can hear it clunking along the roads around here. Um, I don't know in the last two years whether anyone has done any road resurfacing at all in Buckinghamshire or Oxfordshire or Berkshire, which are the three counties I've just been through. It really does feel like you have to drive a Land Rover just not to get a puncture. Anyway, uh, I'm driving home in the sunshine. Uh, if you are interested in the workshops, uh, please do just Google Paul Wilkinson Photography Workshops, and that should, in theory at least, uh, find your way. If not, just head to paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk and you'll see a link on the menu called Coaching, and that's where you'll find them. Uh, Please do subscribe to our podcast. It's really lovely now. We've got so many subscribers that when I hit publish, you can literally see the numbers counting up, uh, the number of downloads of the podcast. Because, of course, all of those devices that somebody subscribed, uh, they pull the podcast down ready for your delectation, probably, probably in your next drive to work. Uh, so if you do enjoy the podcast, and I do hope you do, we do work really hard at making this uh, as interesting and as useful as we can. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit that subscribe button. Please leave us a review. Wherever it is that you consume your podcasts, please do it there. Of course, ideally, iTunes is still the biggest platform for all podcasters. Um, leave us a review. We do read them all. It's imp I don't know why. I've said this before. I don't know why uh, Apple don't allow... Uh, responses from the authors of podcasts but it doesn't um I, the only thing i can do is leave multiple reviews of my own podcast which <laughs> looks really weird but thank you to everyone uh, who has left us a review uh, it's heartfelt when i say thank you and those people who've emailed in to say they enjoy uh the podcast and mastering portrait photography you are truly in my heart all the time every time we pick up a microphone or a video camera to create something that's useful it's lovely to know that that doesn't just 
disappear out there and nobody watches or listens to it. So on that happy note, as the sun is shining and I'm just doing the last mile home, thank you for listening. And whatever else you do, remember, be kind to yourself. Take care, guys. <laughs>